I'm Gary Williams. Your reviews help other people find this podcast. If you would, please leave a review on iTunes. We really firmly believe that 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 part of what we do is about health equity. No matter who you are, you know, no matter what your income level or your insurance status or whatever, breast cancer is devastating enough as it is. Right. You, they deserve to access products and our services that help them feel. That's great. Yeah. Help them say, heal. I say health know? equity and it seems like human dignity as well. It's Absolutely. just just feeling as much like who you are as you can be. Absolutely. That's great. Coming to you straight from Fremont, California, this is the Fremont Podcast dedicated to telling the stories of the past and present of the people and places of the city of Fremont, one conversation at a time. Hello, Fremont. Ricky told me to stick my head in a dumpster and tell you this is episode 89 of the Fremont Podcast. Now, here's your host, Ricky B. Well, um, I'm going to go ahead and get started if you're ready. You yes. good? Okay. Um, I'm with Tina Fernandez, and she is the executive director of HERS. Um, and currently, we are in her office at uh, Washington Hospital System. Welcome, Tina, to the Fremont Podcast. And uh, so tell me a little bit about what you do with HERS. What is HERS, and uh, what, do you, what is your role in this? Okay, so um, HERS Breast Cancer Foundation is a nonprofit. Uh, we've been around since 1998, so this is a big year for us, our 25th anniversary. That's right. And HERS actually is an acronym. It has meaning. Um, it stands for Hope, Empowerment, Renewal, and Support. Okay. And, and those... just to be clear, this is not a uh, like a nationwide uh program this is something that's local it was started yeah, we're here totally locally. yeah very i don't know would you call us hyper local yeah, i don't know probably yeah yeah, yeah yeah so founded in 1998 in fremont okay um by three um very dynamic women um principal among them was a, a woman uh named trisha mcmahon um her dad was actually a physician at washington hospital healthcare system and um she had this vision of um, helping women um, feel empowered and um, especially, you know, women who had been through breast cancer. Mm. And um, the two other founders, um, one was her part, her then partner, um, Cheryl McM- um, Mahoney, excuse me. And then um, actually someone with tax background, um, Nancy Vital. Okay. Uh, so, okay. yeah. So these three women were just like, you know, we they sensed or recognized that the unique needs of breast cancer patients were not being met, huh. post-surgical breast cancer patients. So they set out to create this um, foundation. Um, back then, it had a different name, actually. It was called Bras for Body and Soul. Okay. <laughs> and um, yeah, and some people still know us by that name. But um, a number of years ago, um, they decided to... Um, kind of give the nonprofit a, a makeover. Okay. So we okay. have a new logo, newer logo, and um, and then they did the name change okay, to yeah, Breast Cancer Foundation. Okay, I interrupted you when you were explaining what the acronym stands for. So, oh, no, 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 cool. for. so what, what is the acronym? It stands for Hope, Empowerment, Renewal, and Support, Okay. which are the things that we strive to restore in our patients. Okay. Breast cancer is um, can leave patients feeling just devastated mm-hmm. because of the fear of of the illness, the changes it can cause to their bodies if mm. they've just elected to go through surgery. Um, and so now, of course, there's kind of that movement. It's been with us for a while of prophylactic surgery where patients are just saying, nope, I mean, I my risk factors are too great, so I'm yeah. going to elect to have a double mastectomy, for example. So all of those factors, of yeah. course, treatment too, um, as we chatted about earlier uh, yeah. when you first arrived you know patients lose weight they uh, lose their hair mm. you know uh, changes to their skin mm. um i can see why the uh, original name was a bras for bodies and souls bras for body and soul body and soul. Yeah. i can see how that can be like because that makes a lot of sense there's uh, the physical aspects that uh you that people need help with that they're not sure how to deal with and handle. But then there's also just the, like the inner struggle that comes as well. And I can see how that can be uh, a great name. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is um, quite well done. I'm sure that was a, um, a decision made like with the board and with the team. And, um, 
Uh, my predecessor here uh, is um, a mentor to Dr. Vera Packard. She served as um, executive director after our founder, Trisha McMahon, left the organization. Mm. So uh, Vera was with the organization nine years and then decided to move on um, to a, another cancer-related nonprofit. And so she recommended me for the job. Okay. So I've been here since uh, November of 2017. Okay. So wow. I'm coming up on my sixth wow, year, which is kind of, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you had asked about my role. I'm executive yeah. director. So okay. I oversee operations yeah. here, management. Um, we're small. So mm-hmm. I do, you know, HR, hiring, recruiting, you know, kind of all of that yeah. management, yeah. you know. It's a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. And then when I was hired, um, they, uh, I knew this going into it, they said that um, I would need to do the development as okay. well. And I came from a development background. I worked yeah. at another nonprofit here okay. in Fremont. So um, develop means just um, <laughs> donor relations, major events, yeah. uh, fundraising. Yeah. Um, I do marketing communications too. Do it all. Sort of, although I have to give a shout out, um, and you can find us on Instagram uh, and Facebook, um, but uh, I do now have a social media manager okay. and community outreach okay. manager, yeah. all in one. Her name yeah. is Muriel Foro, and she's fantastic, so yeah. well, that's a huge help. Yeah, I imagine. Uh, I was going to say, I think um, I want to I want to talk a little bit later about you know your you know, what you've done in the past and what led you to this. Mm-hmm. Um, but you have a team out here that's uh, yes. that's that's hard at work as well. And um, before we talk about that or kind of setting it up as far as like helping people understand what they do, mm-hmm. um, what does hers do in general? Like, uh, I think I think it might be um, – I think the the bigger idea of providing support is is uh, is helpful, but like you just walked me through and gave me a tour of everything. So tell me on a on the practical day to day level, what is it that hers does for uh, these uh, breast cancer patients? Right. Okay. So um, we are a nonprofit. Uh, we basically support breast cancer patients with their post-surgical needs. Hmm. So our mission is to support all individuals um, by providing post-surgical products and services regardless of their financial or insurance status. Hmm. And we do this through several programs. Um, So for our underserved patients, meaning patients who are low income, underinsured or uninsured, we have several assistance programs that provide the post-surgical products that I mentioned. So it's pocketed bras, breast forms, or um, breast prosthetics for patients who have lost a breast Mm -hmm. due to surgery. We have wigs. We have post-surgical camisoles that provide support in the weeks following this major surgery. Mm. And then um, we do also have compression sleeves, gloves, and gauntlets. Um, which are fingerless gloves for patients who develop a condition called lymphedema, hmm. um, which uh, is basically a pooling of, um, of lymph fluid or a buildup of lymph fluid in, in hands and arms and um, related wow. to lymph node removal you know, mm-hmm. during their surgery mm-hmm. or um, even, um, you know, damage caused by yeah. you know um, the radiation or, or other treatments yeah. so um, so basically those are the products that we provide um, and we are a nonprofit we do fundraising to support our the charitable side of what we do but I do need to say that we serve patients from all walks of life patients who are fully insured patients who have the means hmm. we are our three locations we are here in Fremont of course San Leandro and then um, Livermore um, are just beautifully appointed spaces. Yeah. They they don't look clinical at all. No, um, although it's very welcome. Right, very welcome. right. Yeah. And a lot of patients say that when they walk in. So um, we are DME, which is, means durable medical equipment. Okay. So um, you know we are are have are contracted with different insurances, and that's yeah. one of the things. Speaking of insurance, that we do too, um, we take that burden off our patients instead of them having to deal with. Um, their um, insurance billing, we handle that for them. That's awesome. Wow. So they are not burdened with that. Wow. They can concentrate on just their healing yeah. and getting yeah. getting, getting better. That's great. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking when you were mentioning just a minute ago, um, you had... Uh, you had said something about the fact that there's like a new procedure as to how, you know, certain... 
um, you know, whether it's surgeries or whatever are, are being done. I can imagine that um, some as because I, I actually talked with uh, another surgeon here at Washington Hospital on another episode, um, I don't know, maybe a couple months ago. And he was talking to me about how um, orthopedics uh, has changed, uh, hip replacement and that sort of thing. And, um, and, and how it just seems to be like changing so quickly, you know, there's certain things that they can do now that they weren't doing three or four years ago. Mm -hmm. How often do you find yourself having to deal with like a new product or a product that no longer, um, is that something like, do you find yourself having to find new products, find new ways to be able to help deal with certain issues that the patients are going through because of different procedures or no? I don't think so. I mean, since I started here almost six years ago, the the products are have not changed that much. Okay. I have to say, we do have patients who who prefer like a lighter prosthetic um, okay. or one that helps keep them cooler. And so there have been developments with the prosthetics that makes sense that um, where they're um, they just allow for you know just. <laughs> better airflow so that they're not overheating. Yeah. They don't have a, yeah. the silicone up against their chest wall yeah. and if, you know, where it feels, um, where they just get overheated for yeah. lack of a better yeah. term. So, yeah. um, and then, you know, also our bras are, are, um, yeah, they're, they're changing styles all the time, making them, um, you know, more comfortable. Hmm. None of our bras are, are, they're all wire free. Yeah. Um, physicians don't recommend wearing, um, wire bras. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, well, one thing I can say too is that we do, um, we do some custom um, prosthetics. So that has been actually a change. So okay. um, where we um, we use an, an iPad basically, and we uh, our breast care specialists do really precise measurements and fittings, and they do a consultation with okay. the vendor, and then um, what we can then provide the patient is a prosthetic that will fit them. Not all, you know, for some patients, um, a off the shelf prosthetic isn't, won't necessarily work. Mm -hmm. And that is because of the extent of their surgery. Um, I think, I know that when I first started here, I thought, oh, okay, if someone has had a mastectomy, the breast is missing, the breast has been removed, but, and it's just a smooth surface. Yeah. But that's not the case. Mm. So patients are left with often with divots in their um, okay. skin, and um, for some patients, a, a custom prosthetic goes a long way towards helping them um, feel better about themselves. The fit is better, um, so that's that good. is something that we do. Yeah, um, and we have done actually custom um, um, some custom uh, sleeves mm -hmm. and gloves for patients who also can't wear something off the shelf. Okay. We'll be right back. You can hear the rest of this conversation in just a moment. Recently, my family was trying to figure out what we were going to do for dinner. We wanted a place where we were going to be served good food, we were going to be treated well, and we wanted a good atmosphere. So we decided to go to Billy Roy's Burgers. Not only does Billy Roy's have the best burgers in town, but they've also got great salads, they've got great sandwiches, and they've got great desserts. The service was efficient and friendly, and to top it all off, it's the beginning of football season. And Billy Roy's has more than adequate screens to watch your game. If you're interested in watching football at Billy Roy's, you won't miss a play. If you're looking for a place to enjoy good food and good service, I recommend Billy Roy's Burgers on Thornton Avenue. Are you tired of pushy real estate agents who don't have your best interests at heart? Jennifer Petroselli treats every client like family and takes the time to educate them throughout the buying or selling process. With her neighborhood expertise and excellent communication skills, Jennifer helps her client make smart real estate decisions that benefit them in the long run. Petroselli Homes Realty Group is a breath of fresh air you need. Reach out to Jennifer today and discover why Petroselli Homes is the right choice for all of your real estate needs. Yeah, because you were also saying while we were walking through and looking at the products, you were saying that um, some are able to have reconstructive surgery, but in some cases, they, people either opt to not do that or they just can't and so um yeah there's products that you have that are able to help um and help 
whatever decision I guess they they, right. they they choose right so some patients have had um, do undergo um, reconstruction and we've had some patients you know it's called a failed reconstruction which is not a reflection on anything the patient has done it's just for different reasons they um, they they might develop an infection it just does not go well so then sometimes for those patients rather than go through another surgery do another reconstruction they just have the um, implants or whatever it is that they've had done reversed Mm -hmm. and then they come to us for a breast form Um, you know some patients just they they'll have their breasts removed and just do not want to deal with additional surgeries Um, those surgeries can often be very um uh, the recovery and then the experience, it, it can be um, just daunting, hmm. very time consuming and painful. It's just not something that they want to go through. Yeah. Um, so for those patients, we do have um, the breast forms that we talked about earlier. Yeah. And That's they great. come in different different shapes, yeah. especially if they've lost a, a, a unilateral mastectomy. If they have one remaining breast, we do our best to hmm. find them a breast form that will match. And so that they're, you know, leaving their home and they're confident and, you know, yeah. they're symmetrical and, yeah. and, um, and then great. they come in different skin tones too, which is wow. important. Wow. That's great. Yeah. Um, how many patients do you, you think that you guys see maybe in a year? Like what is, do, do you, uh, do you have a count on that? Yeah. So what I have is a count of how many um, office visits we have okay. per year. And so that's usually around 2,100 office visits wow. annually. Yeah. No because, way. Well, what happens is we get, and, and I have to count that time because it's like every time a patient comes in, it's it's a fresh appointment. Mm. And so they're often coming to us, let's say for a lymphedema patient. So that person will come to us, let's say in January, and they'll get um, sleeves and gloves to um, address that condition. And with typical wear and tear, even though they're receiving two of each, one to wash, one to wear, because cleanliness is really important being sanitary. So um, two of each um, product or garment, and then with normal wear and tear, um, they're needing to come back like 10 months later hmm. for a replacement, wow. usually within a year. So those are patients that we're spending time with again yeah. later on in the year. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, and hmm. we, um, as of now, we have never charged for office visits, the wow. fittings, the services, those services are free. Wow. Um, but, you know, we do have the retail side of what we do where we sure. sell our products. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But again, for patients who yeah. are are in need um, and and struggling, um, even if their co-pays represent a burdensome um, amount of funds for them, we have even for that, we have a, 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 a fund where we can write those those off that's so. great wow yeah. and so as a nonprofit, this is not just something that um you're not operating off of all the money you're making from the bras that you sell no. uh, so how how do you how do you make that happen yes so we do fundraising all throughout the year so okay. i basically have six initiatives um annually so i do from the top just looking at the calendar year every spring we do a gala that's very pink and very sparkly um, <laughs> folks love that one they have a chance to get Where's dressed that held up. usually that is um last two years we did it at um the casa bella event center in sonol which okay. is a beautiful venue nice. um it's a little small for us so um next year 2024 april 27th folks mark your calendars uh <laughs> we will be back at castlewood country club and that's okay. traditionally where we've always okay. had that event okay. it's just a much larger space to accommodate nice. everyone who wants to attend yeah so um so that is a fundraiser for us we also it incorporates um our hers award so for every you know hope empowerment renewal and support those are four awards that we give out to individuals who have just gone above and beyond to, to support us as that's a great really as a volunteer um it's it's uh yeah so that's a beautiful evening um and then uh, we do our fall uh walk run yoga fundraiser which is always at quarry lakes this it's always the last saturday of september that's coming up it's coming up it's our official kickoff (laughs) to breast cancer awareness month that's another month-long um opportunity for us to get out in the community we do lots of um 
um, presentations, just um, outreach, letting people know about our services. Okay. Um, we do incorporate breast cancer prevention and awareness into those talks and yeah. those presentations. Um, and I, so I don't want to I don't want to hijack the direction of hearing any of the other <laughs> fundraising, but I do yeah. wa- I do want to stop and just make sure. So um, so the uh, run and yoga event uh, fundraiser that's yeah. coming up it's going to be at Quarry Lakes Quarry Lakes um, and so how how can people be involved in this in a way that would benefit you guys oh they can um, for sure they can register and participate the day of the event um, so they can just visit our website hersbreastcancerfoundation.org um, click on our events tab and go to the, our, our event page for the walk run yoga event um or they can just simply call 510-790-1911 for more information this year we're doing something different we're trying to be uh just more mindful of the environment um save printing costs and it has the added benefit of just cutting down our overhead but it um, registration is online only. Okay. So folks can also go directly to raceroster.com and search for our event and register. Just go directly there and just register. Yeah. So um, we're working with a new vendor this year, Brazen Racing, and they're doing our timing for the okay. um, because it is a timed uh, nice. race. Nice. So the 5K, 10K is timed. Um, the walk is up only 5K. And then um, my dear friend, Sherry Plaza, uh, she's a local fitness instructor. Um, she is going to lead our um, yoga session. So okay. it's an outdoor yoga session, which is, a, and there will be chair yoga too. So wow. if people can't get out on the course or don't want to, that approximately 45 minute yoga session is going to be a really nice option. She's She has a really fun approach to yoga she makes fitness fun so okay. we're looking forward to that she's volunteering her time thank you sherry mm. um let's see and then we have a virtual option so if people are living out of state um you know back during covid you know when we had to be just completely virtual we had people in new york people in florida um people in hawaii um walking um uh, and participating virtually so that mm. that's a lot of fun that's cool but one cool. and the other bonus of it is that there's a community expo which is a great way um anybody that might be passing through can walk through that they're welcome to to participate what will we'll, we'll be at the expo like, uh, what are, what, what can local expecting? so almost all of our sponsors are going to have a booth so okay. we're going to see washington hospital Healthcare system and ucsf out there howler's um pharmacy yep. and they also own fremont botanicals yep. jasmine and her team yep. will be out there um she's a new sponsor of the podcast as well oh so that's, there you uh, go that's a uh, um, I'll, I'll have to drop by and uh, support them a little bit too yeah there you go yeah. our girl jasmine is amazing yep. I want to tell you about Milk and Honey Cafe. They're a family-owned restaurant located on Fremont Boulevard in North Fremont. They serve fresh noodles, stir fries, bentos, soup, vegetarian dishes, boba drinks, and so much more. And for Fremont podcast listeners, if you make a purchase of $50 or more, you get a complimentary Thai tea or a fruit tea with your purchase. You can find out how to dine in or order at milkandhoneyfremont.com. For more information and links, be sure to check out our show notes. If you want to hear more of their story, check out episode eight on the Fremont podcast. Um, Let's see. We're also going to have, um, we just confirmed, I think, Fremont PD. Okay. Um, They're big supporters of ours. They participate in the Pink Patch Project. They'll have a booth out there. Uh, uh, My, the nonprofit I uh, co-founded, Tri City Nonprofit Coalition okay. will have a booth. Um, Kathy Kimberlin yep. and my co-founder, um, she's a co-founder, and and Lisa Stambaugh will will be at the booth. Okay. Uh, David Hobart, supervisor, District One, will have a booth. He's a major sponsor. Um, so yeah, oh, yeah. local nonprofits, That's great. small businesses, Banter yep. Bookshop. Yep. You know, yep. shout out also to all a these. Also, <laughs> a new uh, sponsor for our. Amy's uh, great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Amy's really great. So, yeah, yeah it's very much, um, you know just a a great opportunity to find out about what's going on in the community through all of those exhibitors in the middle we always set up this um really um meaningful um space for um it's called the footprints booth 
And um, there's a local family, um, the Buentello Gilligan family. Um, they bring out their family, their own family members and friends. Okay. And they they work on it months in advance. And so they create a theme around the booth. And this year's theme is Wizard of Oz. Nice. And they're t- I know. <laughs> and, I mean, it's very Instagrammable. I mean, they oh, totally. people are totally yeah. attracted to their booth. Um, and But it's called Footprints Booth for a reason because they provide paper footprints. And anyone walking or running can... Um, have a f- paper footprint and write the name of the person that they're walking or running in honor of, and they can pin it to their bib. That's awesome. That's very and their cool. tagline. This I know, and they're, they they've done this every year for years. Um, they're quick to point out that it's not their original concept, but they took it over and they're carrying on the legacy of of the person who originally started it. And I can't recall who that is right now, but um, yeah, the the Buentello family and the Gilligan family are amazing. Shout out to Gloria and um, and her daughter. Um, they're just Jen. Uh, they're just amazing. And so um, their tagline this year is there's no place like hope. <laughs> I love that. Because of Wizard cool. of Oz, yeah. yeah and then they also perfect. have, yeah, I think so. And then they also have a, a survivor's um, booth where they can, if you're a survivor, you can ring the bell. Okay. Um, Dutra Enterprises is our lunch sponsor. So everyone that's registered will get a pink wristband and they can have lunch. Nice. Barbecue lunch. Very There's good. a vegetarian option. What am I missing? We're going to have music. It sounds amazing. It's like, well, it great. sounds to me like anybody that doesn't come is going to be missing all of it. So. Right. So don't don't fall victim to FOMO. Yeah, you need yeah. to, um, everyone out 30th. there, September 30th, Saturday. register online. Okay. Yeah, raceroster.com. Yeah. Awesome. And just search for HERS Breast Cancer Foundation. That's It'll great. pop up. So most importantly, the proceeds from this will go into our assistance programs. Hmm. We really firmly believe that, that that part of what we do is about health equity no matter who you are, you know, no matter what your income level or your insurance status or whatever, breast cancer is devastating enough as it is. Right. You, they deserve to access products and our services that help them feel. That's great. Yeah. Help them say, heal. I would say health know? equity and it seems like human dignity as well. It's just, just feeling as much like who you are as you can be. Absolutely. So that's great. That's Absolutely. Great. So, do you have any other uh, fundraisers or anything like that at all that happens? Mm. You have the two. You have the one in the spring, one in the fall. Anything else? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can give a couple. Um, if I'll just direct yeah. um, listeners to our um, Google Calendar on our website. Again, that's hersbreastcancerfoundation.org. We're going to be um, October seventh, Saturday. Shred City in Union City is going to be doing um, a. Sh- a sh- they're calling it Shred for a Cure. So basically it is, um, anyone can bring, I think it's up to five boxes full of documents, paper only, um, get it shredded for free. They can make a donation and all the proceeds will be coming to hers. Um, there's going to be a barbecue out there. So that's Saturday, October 7th. It's from nine to one shred city on, um, Whipple road in, um, union city. Okay. We're doing a fundraiser, um, at the Kendra Scott store. Um, that's also on our calendar. That's later in the month. Um, in Walnut Creek, uh, out in the Livermore um, uh, Premium Outlets, the Tory Birch Outlet is doing a, a f- shop, you know, give back shop fundraiser for That's us. Great. So yeah. I, I, I think we have a lot going on. A lot on. of different things going on. Yeah, we're adding more all the time. Yeah. I would suggest that um, folks who want to participate in those fundraisers go look at our calendar yeah, we're, and, and look, check it every, every yeah. you know, I would say every few days because we're adding stuff all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So what brought you to hers? Like, how did you, how did you get, where were you before this? Like, what, what was, uh, what was, you, what was the world that you were in before you got here? Yeah. So, um, I, so I've lived in Fremont since 1991. Um, um, I, 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 got married, moved down here, um, had my two kids. Um, consequently, subsequently I got divorced. Um, I ended up, um, just needing to get back into the workforce. So I started volunteering at another great nonprofit here in Fremont called save safe alternatives to violent environments. And I worked my way up from just being, uh, not just, but being in a volunteer to, I did like administrative stuff. And then eventually, um, I started helping, out with events and fundraisers and I think I was there about nine years and by the end of that I had served as I think development director I had been in that role for about three years okay so that was doing major fundraisers you know um, direct mail fundraising campaigns events and that sort of thing okay and then um, 
yeah, so then I was recruited to to take on the executive director job here. I didn't think I could do it. Uh, my husband, I remarried. <laughs> my husband told me, no, you should challenge yourself. And so I've been here ever since. That's great. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. It's been a really, I've learned so much um, as, you know, I, in, in a leadership role, it's a totally different mm. um totally different animal but it's been yeah. a great experience very challenging at times but very mm. rewarding too how, how have you personally been affected by uh like what you what you do what this organization does like when i think i think there's a you know there's certainly a desire to be involved in nonprofits that profits that are doing a good thing um but then when you especially when you're like looking at this particular one you know was there anything that particularly caused you to lean into this organization and want to pursue this job? Or was it um, just looking for another way to be able to contribute to uh, a nonprofit world? So um, both. Okay. So, um, so, so I, I did have a cousin um, with breast cancer. Um, she actually passed away mm. not all that long ago. Mm. Um, but, and cancer has impacted our family. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. unfortunately, mm. just in general. Yeah. So, um, I understand that struggle mm. with the illness. Um, I came, as I said, I came from save. Most of our clients there were women. Mm. Um, I am also a survivor of, of domestic, um, intimate partner violence. Okay. okay. And so I, and I, that's really what drew me to save. Sure. And so um, I like the fact that we were empowering women to feel stronger and to take back control of their lives. Mm. And um, are here, so I saw some congruency here, definitely, because most of our patients are women. Mm -hmm. And it is also about empowering them, yeah. just helping them to feel stronger, mm. helping them to feel better about themselves, um, giving them giving them the products and the services yeah. to help them kind of just just feel stronger, feel better about themselves because mm. it's um, when you don't it's 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 rough, you know. Oh. That's just a it's just a spiral, you know. Mm. So we do see patients who come in and um, I have to say that everybody is at a different place when they come in. There are some patients who are just like all business they come in here and they're like okay i'm here i've had you know a, a, a mastectomy or a bilateral mastectomy i need new breasts this is a, you know this is how i want to yeah it's just i know you know or they'll be back there we had a family um they were so sweet this two sisters came in to support another sister um and um, I had to laugh. My uh, my family is a Filipino, and there was a, a three Filipino okay. women, and they were okay. all supporting each other and talking, talking, talking. <laughs> and um, that was beautiful. They yeah. were helping their sister choose yeah. a wig and to help her feel better. That's about, great, right? Yeah. And but we do have patients who come in and they're very mm. sad yeah. or they're angry, yeah. and it's just like I, I, you know. And so we have patients who are you know struggling just with their emotional health mm. too. And so so just as at my p previous position and just from my personal experience, that's rewarding too, to help women feel, maybe help them a little, you know, a little bit towards feeling just better emotionally too, yeah. you yeah. know? That's great. That's yeah. great. Yeah. I think it's a great organization. I think what you're doing is really cool. And um Thank I you. I have not been in that particular world as far as like I don't have anybody super close to me that has gone through that, um, but I can I have friends uh, whose families have gone through that, and I can just imagine it's uh, it's it's a challenge, you know, it's it's very very difficult. I mean, even uh, some of the things that my family has gone through, where um, the uh, whatever the illness is or whatever the issue has been is life altering and they're no longer the same person that they were before. It just, it's devastating and, and, uh, gutting, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I imagine, uh, what you're doing is just, um, just a wonderful thing for people and for the, com and for those families, for the mm -hmm. community in, in that way. So that's really great. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. that. Yeah. Um, we are really fortunate. Um, we have so much community support and, um, we have volunteers. Um, 
perfect example, Lisa Stambaugh. I'm going to give you a shout out. She's our web admin, um, and she's been with us from day one. Oh, wow. So that's 25 years. That's great. I Did mean, they even that's... have web back then? <laughs> <laughs> she actually, she came in and set up the computers, okay. and she has memories of wow. coming in here and like wiring. Wow. Yeah, yeah that's there's great. pictures of her. Wow. Yeah, but yeah, so she she when I came on board that was one of the my first projects was we did a redesign on our website mm. and so she that was a straight donation. I mean, even now Amazing. like yeah. for our our um our walk run event page, you know, almost every day I'm sending her, "Hey, got a new sponsor and she's she's on it." That's so, great. Yeah, That's so great. she's a perfect example. We have um other volunteers who are wonderful about being out mm. in the community, but I don't do this alone. I've got must must give a shout out to um our board members um kirsten litz has been our board president for a while now and she's my um event partner in crime she's um she's just in it and Mm -hmm. um, loves what we do um she's very open about um being a survivor herself Mm -hmm. and um she's just right there by my side with anything that we need um you mentioned about the the um how it resonates in families. I mean, just yesterday, um, Funda Davashola is another board member. She sent me the a personal statement that she included on her fundraising page for our walk run because her mom's a survivor. And she described it as a blast radius hmm. when someone is diagnosed with breast cancer. I would imagine any cancer, but that's how it felt for them. It was just like, it was the, the blast radius of the disease. You know, it was just... And and you wow. know rushing in to try to help her yeah. mom and just devoting a, a lot of time to her her mm. mom and her family, and them coming through that. Um, so uh, yeah, so that statement wow. that she sent me yesterday and she shared that was beautiful, um, very uh, impactful. Mm. Um, and then our team here, you know, we we have um, so many individuals who are are here not because they have to be but because they want to be i mean you know nonprofit work it's so often described as a labor of love it is that you yeah. know um it 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 is work that should be honored and um all of our team members here our breast care specialists um they of course provide the direct patient services so mm-hmm. they're doing the assessments and the fitting um following up with patients calling them making sure they're okay mm-hmm. um happy with the products that they got and they're progressing wow. but you know i mean it the first touch matters i mean our our the the wonderful staff members that we have who are medical receptionists you know they're they're warm they're patient with with our patients yeah they're yeah. you know warmly welcoming them are um just everyone on the team That's no great. matter what their role that's yeah. great wow. super hard Very working good. yeah well um we'll wrap this up but i'm curious what kind of things do you like to do around fremont when you're not working at hers <laughs> oh my goodness i know um yeah that's uh okay so farmers markets okay. are are wonderful yep. um i think we mentioned niles earlier yep. Yep. niles is is just simply amazing and they've uh, they've stepped up their farmers market as well oh recently my gosh. so it's so much better than it was before yes yeah absolutely um i would say just the variety of restaurants Mm -hmm. um i know that you went to dafkanan yep um i haven't been there in a while but their food is just outstanding um we we go to movies we just strolling around our neighborhood i live near mission san jose and um or in mission san jose i should say and like what's coming up um well, yeah, this weekend. This by the weekend, time this, by the time this know, episode would be, be last weekend, but yes, right. But I do have to give Mission San Jose Chamber a shout out. You know, they're small, but they're really stepping it up, and we're we'll have a booth at the um, Taste of Summer event. Yeah, and um, so I would say doing. Art and Wine Festival. I yep. mean, I volunteered at that. I I poured, <laughs> I poured wine in those canned cocktails for like eight hours. But um, you know, just kudos to 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 Cindy over at the chamber and Napoleon and and um, I think it's Matt, Lindsay, Matt, Matt. Matt. Lindsay, like, yeah, God, yeah. they just work so hard. Um, but I would say anything that that's nonprofit related, I'm I'm all that's about great. that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, very good. Well, yeah. 
Uh, Tina, it's been great having you on the uh, podcast. Uh, you did give uh, information how people can find out more about hers already, give a phone number. Mm-hmm. We'll have all of that in our show notes so people can just click on that and get to where they need to go as yeah. well. Yeah. So Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the work that you do. And um, I'm sure that there are people out there who will be listening to this that um, will know exactly what you're talking about. They've been in this world. And um, more than likely, there'll be people listening that uh, you guys have helped. And so um, just thank you so much for doing that and for being a part of our community. And I hope that your uh, your event on September 30th goes very well. And if unless I have some conflict, I plan on being there as well. Yes, so. absolutely. Join us. I would love that. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Yeah. This episode was hosted and produced by Ricky B. Scheduling and pre-interviews by Sarah S., Rachel Prey is the print editor in charge of our newsletter. I'm Gary Williams. Andrew Cavett is the editor. Music provided by Soundstripe.com. Be sure to subscribe wherever it is that you listen so you don't miss an episode. You can find everything we make, the podcast, our newsletter, and all of our social media links at thefremontpodcast.com. Join us next week on The Fremont Podcast. This is a Muggins Media Podcast.